Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Harris and today in this video we'll talk about a very special topic and that is the alveolar bone. Now this topic is very complicated in most of the books but I'll try to make it as simple as I can and I'll cover almost all the important highlights and the points of the alveolar bone. So how do you define the alveolar bone? The alveolar bone is that part of the maxilla and the mandible which has the teeth and the teeth sockets inside it. It is as simple as that. And another name of the alveolar bone is the os alveolaris. So talking about the structure of the bone, not just the alveolar bone, but every bone, every bone has an outer strong, dense, compact bone and an inner soft, spongy or trabecular bone. Now the compact bone surrounds the spongy bone from either side. Okay, the spongy bone has protection from both of its sides through the compact bone. Now the four most important cells of osteology are the bone forming cells, that is the osteoblasts, the bone maturing cells, that is the osteocyte, which maintain its structural integrity. The third is the bone dissolving cells, that is the osteoclast, and lastly, the progenitor cell, which has the potential of either differentiating into an osteoblast or the osteoclast, as the situation demands. So let's come on to the alveolar bone. Now if you see this picture clearly, we have cortical plates, both outer and inner, they are the stronger portion of the alveolar bone. We have the soft and spongy trabecular bone, and we also have the cribriform plate. Now, the layer of the alveolar bone that is immediately adjacent to, to the root of the tooth, and it makes contact with it, has very fine small perforations present inside it. And there are many blood vessels and nerves that are crossing through these perforations, and thus it is known as the cribriform plate. Now, the alveolar crest, as we can see, is that region where the cortical plate and the cribriform plate meet. Now, that portion of the bone, of the alveolar bone, that actually supports the tooth is known as the bundle bone. And the bundle bone is the innermost lining of the alveolar bone. And this bone, when viewed under a microscope, appears to have fiber bundles running across it. And these fibers actually connect the tooth with the bone. Okay, the fibers in these bundles connect the alveolar bone to the cementum of the tooth. And those regions of these fibers, which are inside the bone and inside the cementum of the tooth, are mineralized. And these fibers are known as the Sharpie's fibers. The concept of bundle bone is extremely important. Now, we'll talk about the compact bone in greater detail. Now, when we view the compact bone under a microscope, we see that it is not a uniform structure. It has many surface layers of bones that are opposed to each other and circumferentially layered across each other, and they are known as the bone lamellae. The compact bone is very thick in the mandible, especially in the molar and the premolar region, and it is comparatively thin in the maxilla. So in the clinics, when we apply excessive force during a dental extraction, especially in the maxillary canine area, we may break the compact bone. Okay, so it's important that we have a steady hand. Now, the trabecular bone is containing small intertrabecular spaces. And these spaces have bone marrow inside it, especially the yellow bone marrow, which is rich in the fat cells, the adipocytes. Now, another important factor about the trabecular bone is the haversion canal system. Now, this system basically has a small canal in the center, which has blood vessels running across it, and it is protected by many layers of bone around it. Okay, these 
haversian canals are circumferentially covered by bones and the haversian canals are basically a structural unit of the trabecular bones. So whenever we see uh, the teeth in a radiograph, in a periapical radiograph, we see that the bone that is immediately adjacent to and is touching the roots of the teeth is hypermineralized and is more radioopaque. Now, this is known as the lamina dura, and this is a perfectly healthy and normal finding. However, in case of pathology, we will see that the lamina dura disappears. Okay, so this is a very normal finding. In the beginning of this video, I discussed with you that uh, the teeth are very closely linked to the alveolar bone. And why is that? The reason uh, there is a, such a strong connection between the two of them is that whenever a tooth falls in case of a pathology or um, in case of a trauma, the alveolar bone recedes its level, okay? And not just in case of a tooth falling from the oral cavity, in case if there is failure of eruption of the tooth, in case if a tooth does not erupt, there is no alveolar bone formed over there. That area is deficient of the alveolar process. We can see in this picture over here that how does it affect the appearance of a human being. If all of the teeth are lost, the bone level recedes, the alveolar process recedes, and finally, if there is no replacement option or a denture or any other uh, treatment option that is given to the patient, there is severe atrophy of the bone. Now, every living tissue has its protective mechanism. And the alveolar bone has a very special defensive mechanism in that whenever there is some sort of pathology, such as periodontitis, when there is bacterial load and many bacteria that are present inside the gums, the alveolar bone senses the danger and recedes its level as a protective mechanism. This is the beauty of the alveolar bone. No other bone in the body shows this sort of behavior. So this was all about the alveolar bone, and this is a very important topic. So read it, as, read it many times and learn it as much as you can. If you have any queries, drop in the comment section below. If you like this video, give a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This is Dr. Harris. Thank you very much.